Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Atheist Experience. I'm your host, Matt Delahunty, and joining me this week is Jeff D. Hi, Matt. Welcome back. Hi, everybody. Today is February 12th, if you're watching us live, which also happens to be Darwin Day. So we'll be talking about that shortly and wishing you all a happy Darwin Day. Um, we're sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings every Sunday at Crescent. At uh, sorry, wow, flashback. <laughs> <laughs> we have weekly meetings every Sunday at uh, Romeo's on Barton Springs. Um, that's just a block or two uh, east west of Lamar, on Barton Springs Road. Those begin at eleven thirty, and they're every Sunday except for the third Sunday of the month when we host a lecture series at the Austin History Center um, at the corner of Ninth and Guadalupe. And that begins at twelve thirty. The uh, both of those events are open to any atheist or atheist-friendly people. Uh, in addition to this program, the ACA also sponsors a bi-weekly internet audio show called The Nonprofits. You can visit nonprofitsradio.com or the atheist-community.org website and link there. Um, we're broadcast over freethoughtradio.com, and they're back up and running. We had a show yesterday, and the next show will be the 25th. Um, that show, as well as this one, are both now available via podcast and download. Um, so if you have the capability to do that, or some of you are listening right now, spread the word, let people know. Um, in addition to the, the programs, we host a number of social events throughout the week. On Monday, we have Godless Gamers at the home of Russell Glasser. Uh, Tuesdays is Unholy Rollers at Playland Skating Rink, which is near 183 in Burnett on McCann behind the Nissan dealer. Thursdays is Atheist Happy Hour at Antonio's Tex-Mex, which is located on the southbound feeder road of I-35, just south of 183. And all of those events um, are open to any atheist, atheist-friendly people, as is dinner after the show. Um, the cast and crew have been getting together for dinner after every show. We're currently going to Threadgills on Riverside. Um, with the show runs till 6 o'clock. We normally get there somewhere between 6.30, 6.45. Come on down. You can meet the, the people that you don't get to see, the ones who are doing all the work behind the scenes, as well as some other ACA members. And uh, But don't come down to preach or proselytize. If, if that's your goal or you want to tell us how wrong we are or why you're right, uh, feel free to call into the show. This is a live call-in program. We'll have the number up for you soon. Um, but first, we'll go over to Jeff's got some information for us. I do indeed. Uh, as you said, today is Darwin Day. And for those of you who've never heard of that uh, particular holiday, Darwin Day is celebrated every year on February 12th, which is today. And all over the world, people will be gathering to celebrate science and humanity. Uh, Darwin Day is held every year on or near the anniversary of Charles Darwin's birth. Darwin Day events not only celebrate human understanding and knowledge, but also promote public education in science. Colleges, universities, museums, humanist and free thought organizations, libraries, campus and community groups, and science enthusiasts in hundreds of locations around the world are hosting events. These range from readings of Darwin's On the Origin of Species to lectures, multi-day conferences, and so on. Uh, there is a Darwin Day website. If you uh, are interested in more information, uh, you can go to www.darwinday.org. And um, Matt, in honor of Darwin Day, I brought you a monkey. Sweet. Thank the, you. Darwin Day is really, it's, it's pretty new, so we don't have a lot of established uh, traditions for Darwin Day. Uh, but I think the pres presenting of a monkey is appropriate. Pin the beak on the finch is kind of appropriate. That would be fun. We should, yeah, we should try that. Like a tail feather. And yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, the, uh, last year for Darwin Day, the ACA had a trip out to the Austin Zoo to like look at animals on Darwin Day, which also seems appropriate. Uh, but this year, uh, the Darwin Day event we're having is this right here. We're doing a special on the on the TV program. So um, here's a little bit 
about Charles Darwin. Ro uh, Charles Robert Darwin was born on February 12, 1809 in Shrewsbury, England. He was the fifth child and second son of Robert Waring Darwin and Susanna Wedgwood. Darwin was the British naturalist who became fav famous for his theories of evolution and natural selection. For more than 20 years, Darwin collected vast amounts of scientific data and pondered the issue of how animals and plants changed their morphology over long periods of time. From 1831 to 1836, Darwin served as naturalist aboard the HMS Beagle on a British science expedition around the world. Darwin was an accomplished geologist and collected many fossils from various strata of rocks during his five-year voyage on the Beagle. As a result of this activity, he became aware of the vast age of the Earth. In South America, Darwin found fossils of extinct animals that were similar to modern species. On the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific Ocean, he noticed variations among plants and animals of the same general type as those he'd seen in South America. The expedition visited places all around the world, and Darwin studied plants and animals everywhere he went, collecting more specimens to further his study. He also studied mutations resulting from breeding experiments with domesticated plants and animals. He was able to consider all of this information when he was trying to determine the specific mechanism that permitted animals and plants to change over time. Eventually, he realized that the mechanism underlying the process of evolution was Called, was what he called natural selection. This idea led him to publish On the Origin of Species, arguably the most significant book of the last two centuries on November 24, 1859. Darwin's theory of evolutionary selection holds that variation within species occurs randomly and that the survival or, or extinction of each organism is determined by that organism's ability to adapt to its environment. To explain the mechanism of natural selection, here is the first paragraph of chapter 4 on natural selection, taken from his original publication in Darwin's own words. How will the struggle for existence, discussed too briefly in the last chapter, act in regard to variation? Can the principle of selection, which we have seen is so potent in the hands of man, apply in nature? I think we shall see that it most uh, can act most effectively. Let it be borne in mind that what an endless number of strange peculiarities are domestic productions and, to, in a lesser degree, those under nature vary, and how strong the hereditary tendency is. Let it be borne in mind how infinitely complex and close-fitting are the mutual relations of all organic beings to each other and to their physical conditions of life. Can it then be thought improb improbable, seeing that variations useful to man have undoubtedly occurred, that other variations useful in some way to each being in the great and complex battle of life should sometimes occur in the course of thousands of generations? If such do occur, can we doubt, remembering that many more individuals are born than can possibly survive, that individuals having any advantage, however slight, over others would have the best chance of surviving and of procreating their own kind? On the other hand, we may feel sure that any variation in the least degree injurious would be rigidly destroyed. This preservation of favorable variations and the rejection of injurious variations I call natural selection. After the publication of Origin of Species, Darwin continued to write on botany, geology, and zoology until his death in 1882. He is buried at Westminster Abbey. Darwin's work had a tremendous impact on religious thought. Many people strongly opposed the idea of evolution because it conflicted with their religious convictions. Darwin avoided talking about the theological and sociological aspects of his work, but other writers used his theories to support their own theories about society. Darwin was a reserved, though hard-working scholar who concerned himself with the feelings and emotions not only of his own family, but friends and peers as well. It has been supposed that Darwin, has been claimed that Darwin re uh, renounced evolution on his deathbed. Shortly after his death, 
temperance campaigner and evangelist Lady Elizabeth Hope claimed that she visited Darwin at his deathbed and witnessed the renunciation. Her story was printed in a Boston newspaper and subsequently spread. Lady Hope's story was refuted by Darwin's own daughter, Henrietta, who stated, quote, I was present at his deathbed. He never recanted any of his scientific views, either then or earlier. And that's Charles Darwin. All right. We'll, uh, we'll get the telephone number for you. We've, uh, we've already got at least one caller. I don't know if we can go there now or... I don't see why not. All right. Do you have something to say to discuss about Darwin Day? No. I well, laid it all out, man. Yeah, you, you, you <laughs> let everybody know what's up, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it and other things. Okay. As usual, if, you're, if you don't see a telephone number in a moment or so, uh, you're probably watching a rerun. Uh, today's February 12th. We're live. We'll have the number up. Call in. You can talk about... Preferably Darwin Day, but we don't ever hold anybody to specifically staying on topic. <laughs> and it looks like we're going to depart from that almost right off, right off the bat. <laughs> so we have, is it Lenny Spirit? Lenny? No, just Lenny. Lenny. Hi, Lenny. Ah. Happy Darwin Day, Lenny. Typo. Hi, right, what's the deal, man? You know, um, like, uh, I support evolution, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, I feel it's got tons of evidence for it and things like that. But, um... Uh, on the subject of Darwin, my only problem with dude was that like uh, he was racist. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't mean in a way like that. Darwin was racist. You're saying? Yeah. Um, I don't mean in a sense that they try to discredit him with like you know saying that like he was trying to apply it to like um certain races were in theory. I don't mean like that. There there were things in Darwin's writings which a lot of people have considered racist, and and the from what I've been able to look at, the thing you have to remember is that. Um, they didn't know that much back then, and it wasn't, he wasn't being racist in a sense of, of uh, intentionally denigrating some other race. They were trying to account for racial differences, and yeah, some of the things he said have, have come across as kind of racist, but it doesn't discount the actual scientific evidence. And, oh, and, no, oh, no doubt, no and, doubt. And, uh, I would add, uh, bef before we go on, um, uh, Darwin's entire culture was quite a bit more racist than ours is today. Yeah, and, that's what I'm saying. You and it's, I mean? you know, it's unfortunate that you know, some of that may have rubbed off on him. But at the same time, in his, uh, in his journals from his, uh, his trip around the world, he was from Britain, but he stopped in, I believe, South America and saw slavery in action because they didn't have slavery in Britain in his day. And he wrote about how absolutely despicable that was. Oh, yes, I'm aware of that. I mean, in the scale of things, Abraham Lincoln was more racist than Darwin, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I just wanted to point that out, you know what I mean? Uh, like I said, I, it doesn't take anything away from his day. I mean, he spent over 20 years working on it. And uh, it, it's funny how no, no matter how much evidence some, you know supports it, some people will say, well, no, that's just crap. And it's like, well, what's some evidence of your view? And then, you know, it's kind of, it kind of stops short. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was, like, as atheists, do y'all have any, like, what's y'all view on, like, um, uh, spirit or soul of our humans? Do you think we have one? Do you think, you know? Go for it. Sure. Uh, uh, we pretty much, now, it, it okay. All that atheism is, is the lack of belief in any gods, yeah. right? Right. There are atheists who believe that there are souls, but it's kind of rare. Buddhists. Uh, for example, Buddhists are technically atheists because Buddhism hasn't got a god, right? right. But they have some supernatural beliefs that include things like souls, right? So it, atheism doesn't directly say anything about that. What you'll find, what I've found, is that most atheists, at least in the West, um, there's a general sort of um, mood of scientific skepticism that comes, goes along with atheism. And generally, you don't find atheists who believe in those kinds of things. I think a lot of it comes down to, to which label you, you want to adopt. For example, we, we recognize that Buddhists are, are generally atheists because they don't have a specific belief in a god and, and, and none of that fits in with the, uh, their religion. There are a bunch of other people um, who profess all sorts of other spiritualities and stuff who may actually deny that, that any god exists and could be considered atheists. What I find normally is that if somebody says, I'm an atheist, um, 
that kind of comes brings along with it uh, some element of uh, of intellectual rationalism, where where you've evaluated specific claims and come to conclusions. And while I certainly can't speak for all of them, um, the only spirit uh, that I can you know accept is a poetic you know human spirit or a poetic soul. Anything that's supernatural or transcends the body or exists after death, I, I have no reason to believe that any of those are, are real claims. I got, I got you. I got two more things and I'll get off. One, um, are you aware, uh, you, are y'all familiar with, uh, I think it's Phineas Gage. He was, he was like, a, I think it was like in the 1800s or maybe the early 20th century. But he, he was like a, I guess a miner and he had an accident and a pole flew up through his brain. Like, basically through the skull and, like, flew out 50 feet. And the thing was, like, um, his personality totally changed after that. So, right. um, yeah, I have heard that story. So, like, they're, they're saying that, that that's evidence that the mind and the brain are actually connected. So that would suggest that once you die, you know, your mind is gone. You know yeah, that, that is a famous example, uh, but there are a lot of examples of, of, of you know, trauma to the brain affecting a person's personality, not yeah. just making them sick, but actually making them seem like a completely different person. And, uh, and that is evidence that what, you know, what makes us us is our physical processes going on inside the brain. Because it doesn't matter how much damage you do to the brain, theoretically, if we are really intangible souls just kind of hovering around our physical bodies and animating them like puppets, then no damage to the body should change our personalities at all. But it does. Right. And one last thing, uh, we all could see that, that uh, there are some things that are outside the realm of science, you know, I mean, science, it, it, it's, it's a great tool, but I mean, by its very definition, it can only deal with things in a natural, you know, natural universe or physical universe. And you have to see that there is things that you can't explain and that they might possibly exist, but you, by through science you would never find it. It'd be more in the realm of philosophy. I guess. That's it. I well, I sure. think that the possibility exists for anything. Um, the point is that science works within you know natural laws and determines and operates on the precept that every. Oops, <laughs> yeah, science operates on the precept that everything can be explained by natural law or uh, it, it, without any supernatural intervention or anything else. The fact that we don't have an answer for everything yet um, d doesn't in any way discredit that that core foundation of science. Right. I mean, it's it is if if somebody says, you know, here is a topic that science can't say anything about yet, I. You know, there there are things like that, and you know, sometimes sometimes that's true. Though there actually are a number of topics that people still think science can't say anything about that it can say things about because science has moved ahead and they're just not aware of it. Um, but if any time anybody says, "Here is some area where science will never ever be able to say anything," um, I think that's always unwise. We don't know what uh, what the capabilities of human inquiry may be with advanced technology that is developed in the future. We, we don't know. So um, yeah, I think it's, it, you know, scientists generally are pretty good about recognizing the limits about, of, of what they can talk authoritatively about. Um, but sometimes non-scientists think that because there is a limitation now that it's a limitation forever. And that doesn't necessarily follow. Exactly. Also, there's a, um, oh, I've, I've lost a thought now. Oh, well, take a call then. <laughs> we'll go on and uh, talk to Ryan. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Hi, Ryan. Happy Darwin Day. Well, thank you very much. You too. I have, uh, I've never, I've never actually seen your show live before, so I saw the number come up and I had to call in. No. I, um, I, I had a question. I was wondering, and I wanted to bring up Darwin, and I was wondering if, um, how soon after his, his theory and his, uh, publishings was it public? Uh, was, was the was the public aware of it? And if he was persecuted in any way uh, during his lifetime, or if this wasn't even really well known until after he was after he passed away? Wow, you know, I'm not sure about that. Um, 
to my knowledge, there were never like armed mobs at his door with pitchforks and torches trying to take him out and string him up. I've, okay. I've never heard anything like that. Uh, were bad things said about him? Yes, absolutely. All right. And 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 I also I also know that he himself was extremely nervous about publishing the Origin of Species. So he, he sat on that aware. thing. Yeah. Huh? So he was very aware of what he was doing. Yeah. Into. Yeah. He actually uh, had considered not publishing it at all until, um, is it Huxley? Uh, the, no, you, are you talking about the other scientist right. who was saying things similar to him yeah, and he decided he had to publish his book? Yes. Wallace, thank you. He might, he might have held it until after his death if it weren't for the fact that um, the credit was about to go to somebody else. Yeah. So did he, was he brought up with any sort of um, belief that he would have himself um, disproven or or contradicted? Was he was was he timid about telling his own family or anything like that? Now I don't know whether he was timid about telling his own family. I do know that in, early in life he trained for the priesthood. Okay, okay. Well, that's cool. That's uh, basically what I wanted to know. All right, great. Anything, anything else? Thanks. Uh, not that I have right now, no. There is quite a bit more information at the Darwin Day website and all over the internet. Um, okay. If you're interested, you can you can check that out. Well, thanks, guys, very much. Thanks, thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. Huh. We got. Uh... Oop. What do I you could, have? Well, I could do a little more. Sure. Go ahead. Um. There's some Darwin other Darwin Day events going on around town. I uh, I only mentioned the ACA uh, so far, uh, that, that this here is our, our Darwin Day event. We're talking about it on the show. Um, but um, here are some other, uh, some other places that are doing Darwin Day events. University United Methodist Church here in Austin. Reverend Carl W. w. Rolfs is the senior pastor, and uh, they are part of the Clergy Letter Project. Uh, and uh, they have an ev they're calling this event Evolution Sunday. Yep. On February 12, 2006, hundreds of Christian churches from all portions of the country and a host of denominations will come together to discuss the compatibility of religion and science. For far too long, this, this is from their website, for, for far too long, strident voices in the name of Christianity have been claiming that people must choose between religion and modern science. More than 10,000 Christian clergy have already signed the clergy letter, demonstrating that this is a false dichotomy. Now, on the 197th anniversary of the birth of Charles Darwin, many of these leaders will bring this message to their congregations through sermons and or discussion groups. Together, participating religious leaders will be making the statement that religion and science are not adversaries, and together they will be elevating the quality of the national debate on this topic. 441 congregations from 49 states and the District of Columbia are participating this year, 11 of them right here in Texas. Kind of makes me wonder which state they couldn't find a, uh, <laughs> they couldn't a find church to support. Well, you know, maybe one of them little states. Or sparsely populated ones. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to. I don't know, curious. man. I'm too curious. I have Are to you find trying out to insinuate why. something here? Well, you know, <laughs> it, it, there, I have my guesses, but uh, you're thinking it's Alabama, aren't you? I, I am thinking it's Alabama <laughs> or something, something in Dixie. And now, you know, you, you may think it may strike you as odd that here's uh, an atheist show and we're announcing an event happening at a local church, um, but it is Darwin Day and. I don't actually personally like to talk about evolution on this show because as far as I'm concerned, evolution's not an atheism right. issue. Evolution is a, uh, a, an important scientific discovery that um, tends to, uh, I think Richard Dawkins says, it enables one to be an uh, intellectually fulfilled atheist because it's so explanatory of things that otherwise are uh, left to you know, the divine intervention of a god. But really, if you want to find out about evolution, you know, I always recommend people go and ask scientists, because we're not scientists, we're some morons on TV. 
But the reason I mention this is you know, th there is this perception that if you believe in evolution, then you must automatically be some kind of, of anti-religious um, heretic. And uh, that, that's just not so. Yeah, and I, was, I, I like the fact that these churches have gotten together, the Clergy Letter Project. Um, it's not only does it, is, it, is it a good attempt to kill off this, this mis, misleading message that you can't uh, be religious and also accept science. Well, but, <laughs> I have something to say about that too. But it also it kill, kills off the, you know, a lot of the claims that, oh, you're celebrating Darwin Day. Well, you know, you guys are worshiping at the feet of Darwin and, and evolution is your religion. And, well, that's just nonsense also. Um, you know, I, I don't remotely worship Darwin in any way. I just Not any more than I worship Abraham Lincoln on Lincoln's birthday. Yeah, or trees. Or trees on, on Arbor, Arbor Day. Day. <laughs> We're all druids and didn't know. Or that. bunnies on Easter. Oh wait, that's a that's a <laughs> that's a secular version of our religious holiday. Oh, well. But I still don't worship the bunnies, even though, you know, I think the bunny thing is more fun than the religious part of that holiday. Um, yeah, but but I do have to comment. I personally disagree with the clergy letter project on this on this issue of um, are science and religion um, uh, opposed. I think they are personally. I think that what will happen eventually is that one or the other is going to drive the other one from the field, and I hope it's science because it's the one that's got evidence behind it. But I tend to agree. But I certainly think it is healthier for religionists to relax on their, their dogmatic beliefs and accept the evidence supporting evolution and attempt to integrate it with, the, with their remaining beliefs. Yeah, they've done it with other That's things. healthier than, you know, freaking out and trying to call everybody that, that agrees with Charles Darwin some kind of, you know, monster, because we're not. Yeah, I, I do think that religion and science are generally at odds, um, and I, it, this is, I mean, it's been demonstrated over and over throughout history. The religion says one thing, science, you know, calls that into question and produces a bunch of evidence that says, whoops, no, that's not the way it is. The earth isn't flat. It's not yeah. the center of the universe. So, you know, right. um, it's, it's not held up on pillars and uh, angels aren't holding our feet to the ground or, you know, any other Yeah, type well, of you know, we had, that, we had that earlier caller who asked about, um, who brought the subject of, you know, things that science can't talk about. Well... And, and I think that when it comes to um, Christians that can accept evolution, they've just let go of the evolution thing and said, well, that is something science can talk about now, right? Yeah. And they've got other things that they think science can't talk about, and a lot of them, science may well not be able to talk about those things yet. But, um, but still, the idea that you know, it, it, if you make the claim science will never, ever, ever be able to say anything about those things, I think that's, I think that's premature. Yeah, it, it, it's not that surprising because religion, like everything else, evolves. It changes over time. You know, the, the, if you take a look just at Christianity and how much Christianity has changed in the last 150, 200 years um, between what is preached from the pulpit and believed by the layperson, today's Christians in general don't look anything like they did 150, 200 years ago or, or earlier. Now you have a few, you know, nut jobs like Fred Phelps um, who who honestly Fred Phelps's teachings they're scriptural he's teaching right out of the Bible Leviticus does say that you're supposed to kill homosexual men um, the fact that most Christians think he's nuts for you know the way he, he protests that and and uh, that they don't have to follow that rule anymore that's a demonstration of how reasonable society has influenced their religious beliefs. They can no longer, you know, run around as, as well, God's told me that you guys need to die. And, yeah. and that has to go, has, has gone away for the most part, and there, I think there's a lot of other things that are going to be going away as we learn more from science. Yeah, but we'll see. Let's, uh, let's move on to another call. We've got Cody. Yeah, hi. How are you, Cody? Doing? Happy Darwin Day. Thank you very much. Um, I had a question about Charles Darwin. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had heard at school that he was actually, like, a Catholic monk or something, and that he didn't want to release the, his information because he thought that non-Christians would use it in the way that atheists do. Uh, that's not correct. He did train for the priesthood, 
before he went on his uh, his sailing trip around the world. I don't know the circumstances under which he stopped being interested in being a priest and decided to be a naturalist instead. Um, but his his stated reason for withholding the publication of The Origin of Species was he was afraid of a backlash against him personally by the church. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay, and God bless. Whoops. I, did, I didn't mean to cut you off. You said things. <laughs> sure. You're free to pronounce your blessings upon us whenever you want. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> Let's go on to Chris. How you doing? Hey, guys. Uh, Hi, Chris. I, I Happy Darwin you, Day. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I know you don't want to talk about, Dar you don't sound like you want to talk about Darwin that much, so I, I wanted to share. Well, but today's a special day, <laughs> so I'm making an exception. Well, we could talk about Lincoln. What about Lincoln? Uh, I'm just joking. But. <laughs> Well, it's his birthday, too, so... Is it? In fact, oh my gosh, it is. Uh-oh, it's a war on Lincoln's birthday that we're <laughs> conducting here. I'm just waiting for that accusation. Yeah, well, anyway, <laughs> I had an interesting short uh, instant messaging exchange with somebody in Denmark. Uh-oh. I bet I know where this is going. <sighs> uh, okay, well, I, I, it'll probably take two, a minute or so. You want me to read the whole thing? Um... Up to you, man. Yeah, go, sure. go for it. Well, I, starters, I'm not sure where I encountered this guy first, but I, but I remembered he was in Denmark, and I just figured, oh, I am see what's going on. And I said, uh, what country are you in? And he says, uh, Denmark, how are you? And I says, how are, and he says, how are you? And I said, that's what I thought. I said, and, and then I'm not very diplomatic, but I asked him, are you worried about the barbarians coming to get you? <laughs> and he says, who barbarians? And I said, the barbarians who read the Koran. They hate everyone in Denmark. And then, you know, I... Oh, I, now, hold it. There, it's only the, uh, the fundamentalist readers of the Koran. True, but, you know, this went rather interesting. Okay. They are not bather barbarians. You rather sound like one. So what? They have reason to hate Denmark. I hate this damn country as well. <laughs> and he says, what is wrong with Denmark? He says, Denmark have military forces in Afghanistan and Iraq. And... Well, they racisty, and by the way, uh, and so, and I said I don't agree with that. I Meaning, I don't. And I said, but I, I also don't agree with torching embassies. I am an atheist, and he says I'm not Danish. Just live here. Uh. If if you think that's okay to call someone barbarian because of they reading the Holy Quran, you are effed up. Atheist, then f you. Be glad we ain't in the same country. Would love to burn you as well. <laughs> Yeah, guys, I guess what I'm wondering after this exchange, and I yeah. said, it, it looks like I hit a nerve and you are making threats. And so then he basically just cuts it off after that because he w went offline. But I, mean, <laughs> I sometimes wonder with these people, you know, granted, most of these people aren't willing to fly airplanes into buildings, but how many of them, for example, you know, Cat Stevens said that the, you know, the death sentence on Salman Rushdie was right. Right. Now, Cat Stevens has never done anything himself, but, you know, and then, or, or, you know, how many of these people, you know, while they may not kill anybody, will endorse female circumcision? Or, you know, it's, it's something you've got to wonder about here. I, you know, I'm, I guess I'm just wondering, where, you know, you know are, 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 the, are the Bin Ladens really a minority is my question. Sam Harris has asked the same question, um, as have a lot of other people, um, and, and whether or not the political correctness that, that the world is, has become accustomed to isn't actually doing more harm than good by avoiding the issue. And did these cartoons, were, were they actually necessary to, hey, this is what the public perception of you is. This, here's an opportunity for you to, you know, it, disprove this and yet what we see in re in response is not any real attempt to uh, change the public image it's just outrage well uh, I'll admit I haven't been watching that particular story because to me it's non news when some religious people get upset about somebody um, offending them but uh, but to be fair, and maybe I, you know, maybe I'm uh, 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 demonstrating that same political correctness that that um, uh, Sam, Harris. Sam Harris was was uh, was uh, uh, talking about in his book. 
of course, giant demonstrations and explosions and things, those get in the news. But the, the Muslims out there who are not fundamentalists, who may be personally offended, but not to the point of actually committing crimes, that, you know, a Muslim not committing a crime isn't news. Nobody not committing a crime is news. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know what the statistics are. What, I have no idea what percentage of the Muslim world is actually uh, doing harm and what percentage is sitting at home going, oh, no, look at those idiots. They're making us look bad again. Well, you know, just like the Christians who today are gathering in uh, churches around the country talking yeah, about how, as far as they're concerned, evolution and their beliefs are perfectly compatible. And every time uh, Dar that uh, every time Falwell or Robertson or one of those idiots opens their mouth, they cringe and say, "Look, those idiots are making us look bad." Well, you know, we saw something similar, in my view, happen here in Austin. I mean, when the Chronicle put that cover with, you know, you know what cover I mean they had on a couple of weeks ago? Uh, was it the? I think it was like the twenty seventh issue had a woman with a Bible between her legs. Yeah, and and and, and and these nuts and these nuts. I mean, for example, they they started a boycott of Altex because some people started a, said they won't, wouldn't go to Altex because Altex advertised, and then Altex wrote the Chronicle a letter saying, we're pulling our advertising from you. Yeah. I mean, these people really, I mean, the difference is only in degrees, but it's definitely not a difference in theory, and that's one of the problems for the West is the West here is really philosophically disarmed because most people in their heart of hearts do not support the First Amendment. They really don't. You know, you know, you know, you know. I'm afraid polls show that you are right. You know, I mean, you know, if you know, I support the First Amendment, and and as a result of that, I have to support Scientologists, and I have to support people as silly as Holocaust revisionists. I hate their guts, but I have to, I have to support their right to say that stuff. Yeah, you got to take the bad with the good sometimes. Because it, yeah, it, it is, it is a package deal, and it's not always the the best package deal to take, but. It's well, I, I found if you, I found the people that were objecting to the to the Chronicle. Yeah, I think it's highly suspicious myself because the type of people who would object and make a big fuss over this probably aren't Chronicle readers in, in, anyway. That that's a good point, you know. But you know, well, one person. Well, you know, but they may be all tax customers. So true, and well, and one person pointed out, you know, they just. You know, it, you know, you walk, think, when you saw it on the stands, it kind of jumped out at you, you know. And I think it was designed to do that. You know, you're supposed to make yeah. a cover. That well, Jeff had made, made the point that, you know, they may not necessarily be Chronicle readers, but they, they are uh, supporters of some business, and that's how they do this. Yeah. But, but I think that is the key issue. That is the thing here. It's, it's just like the ones who are objecting against um, the NBC TV shows, the, the Book of Daniel and that Will and Grace episode that was going to have crucifixions. Um, they're not watching that. But they're actively working to make sure nobody else can either. Yeah, and I, I think what, but one thing I think we have to do though is we, we cannot, I mean, and I really think that if this had happened in 1776, every, most American newspapers probably would have printed those cartoons just out of defiance. The appeasement here is, is in my view, rather frightening. And I, I do believe that in many cases when you appease evil, that just makes it worse. Uh I tend to agree. You know, it's it's just like Neville Chamberlain in Munich in 1938 saying to Hitler, "Okay, you can have the Sudetenland." Well, you know, a, a year later, you know, things got a whole lot worse. You know, it, you know, and uh, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. I th I think Hitler was a credit to these people. I, I really, you know, because Hitler didn't think he was on some mission from God. Yeah. Well, well um, maybe. Uh, um, yeah, it depends what I, you I, need. I, I don't know. I have a hard time making any comparisons like that. The other day, you know, and I fully recognize that within Christendom there is a doctrine that if you are actively uh, po taking, leading people away from the truth of Jesus, um, you have committed the worst possible sin that there is. Um, I, I understand the basics of that. I understood it when I was a Christian. But the other day on a forum, when I was relating the story of, of Dan Parker and talking about what I do with regard to the TV show, um, a one of the forum posters said that you might, I might as well have relayed the story of Jeffrey Dahmer because his sins pale in comparison to what Dan Barker and myself, you know, by inclusion, have, have uh, do. And I, 
I tried to explain how absolutely absurd, I mean, in, in one sentence, she demonstrated not only her own moral character, um, but an indictment of, you know, this, this religion, which is supposed to be supposedly about peace and love thy neighbor and turn the other cheek and everything. Um, the, you can have these ideas and, and relate the absolute worst without, uh, without resorting to that, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the problem is that religions claim to be the source of moral teachings, or at least some of them do, particularly Christianity and Islam, right? They claim to be the source of the rules by which you're supposed to live. And unfortunately, their, the moral understanding embodied in those religions is several thousand years out of date. And... And, you know, when I find it incredibly ironic, for, for example, when I meet Christians who say <clears throat> that, uh, you know, a atheists may be able to be good people, but they have no good reason to be good people, right? That, that all of the, the valid reasons for being good are come from religion. What they're saying is their moral system is you don't do bad things because you'll be horribly tormented forever in hell if you do. And that's setting aside the ones that think that all you need to do is express your, your regret at some point before you die and then you get to live in happy land forever. The reason, the, 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 the actual source of morality, the actual source is, is the, what you need to do to get along with other human beings. And that's what our culture has lost. And that's what Muslim cultures have lost. They don't understand that the reason why you'd want to have a thing like morality in the first place and the job that your morality ought to do is to get along with other people so everybody can lead a healthy, happy, productive life. Um, I was going somewhere with this, but I think I've had enough of a rant. Okay, dope. Uh, anything else, caller? Uh, not at this point. That, that, that's certainly a good point, though, as to where we are. And I, I think that's, I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if we ever really, really have had, I, I don't know if a lot of places in the world have ever really had that belief in morality. Uh, I think you know what? This is interesting. Um, a friend of mine over the holidays gave, uh, gave me a DVD that's a collection of old 1950s black and white movies that, that they'd show in public schools to teach kids about like the rules of the road or don not smoking or yeah. and so on. I watched the first one and it's about manners. And nowhere in that thing, this is from the 1950s, right? Yeah. Nowhere in the in the entire movie does it say you should have good manners cuz otherwise Jesus is going to fry you forever. It was explained clearly to these kids in school. The reason you want to have, uh, have manners, the reason we all need to buy into this notion that we should all behave with good manners is so that we can all get along. And it just floored me because I have, you know, I was born in 1961. I've got this impression of the 1950s that it was, you know, fundamentalist heaven, that everything was all about religion. This wasn't. And it gives me a lot of hope that human beings are in fact capable of understanding that and passing it on to their children and that we may be able to swing our culture back toward a rational understanding of how to get along instead of a religious one. Well, you know, one thing where there's agreement is everybody agrees that two plus two is four. You know, so, so you know, agreement on certain things is achievable. I mean, there isn't anybody going around saying that two plus two is five you know, or, or setting up any alternative mathematics, so... Well, know, there's, there's that thing about pi in the Bible, but other than that... Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, you have Euclid and non-Euclid in, but that's about it, so... Uh, yeah, let's, uh, you know. let's not go down that road today. Okay. Thanks a lot for calling, Chris. Okay. Thanks for your call, and callers. happy Darwin Day, if I didn't already Thank wish you one. Yeah, yeah, happy bye. Darwin Day. Happy Darwin Day. And uh, <laughs> for Chris and any of the other listeners who... Uh, Atheist, atheist friendly people. We uh, go to dinner after the program, and we're currently going to Thread Gills on Riverside. Um, the address is up there. The show runs till six, and we normally get there somewhere between six thirty and six forty-five. You can meet the the crew from behind the scenes uh, who make all this possible, as well as other ACA members. So come on down and have fun. And we're going to Bert. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hi, Bert. Hey. Happy Darwin Day. 
Um, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so God is supposed to uh, love each of us individually, like no matter what we do, correct? That you have to ask who. a question. We don't know. We to, don't believe in that guy. It depends on which God and which religion and Christian God. You know. Okay. okay. That's that. If, that is if, what. Okay. Say if if he's supposed to love everyone equally. Yeah. And stuff, then then you should, you guys should be going to heaven too, then, right? Um, one would think so. It seems like a fair question to Christians, yeah. So, really, you can just go about your life doing as you please, then towards the end, beg for forgiveness and go to heaven? Well, that's if we believed that that's the way it worked, that might make some sense. In fact, yeah. we don't believe that's the way it works. We don't think there is a God or a heaven. And so we're concerned about this life and how to have a, a happy one here and now. Well, yeah. Um, have you all heard about these church burnings that are going on? Yeah. Are you all behind it? No. Are you? I guess, yeah. I think he's shocked I, that I... I guess that's an answer. <laughs> or maybe the studio hung up on him. What was his name? Bert. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bert. <laughs> he, uh, he would not say he was not behind those church burnings. <laughs> I just think that uh, maybe the I find your absence of a denial very interesting. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, Bob. How you doing? You cut me off, you chubby. Yeah. <laughs> Is he still there? That was him. Uh, I, I, I think he might have been tying up both lines. Doesn't matter. Huh. Well. So, what do you got? Um, I got more. Go on. Your day. Uh, More places where Darwin Day events are happening in the Austin area. University Presbyterian Church. Ooh, and it's we don't have necessarily time. Some of the no, you have to contact. You have to contact the churches to find out. This one specifically states evening worship service, but you know you can contact the uh, the various churches and find out. So as soon as they're they're done watching, huh? As soon as they're done watching, they can run right over there. That's the phone book. That's their church. That book. Uh, I already mentioned University United Methodist Church. This is University Presbyterian Church. At their evening worship service, they're doing a Darwin Day thing. Uh, the Reverend uh, Ben Johnston Crace. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and finally, Church of the Savior in Cedar Park. The Reverend Mary Wilson is the pastor, and uh, they will also be having a Darwin Day event. Do we have any more calls? Oh, and not at the Anything moment. Anything you want to talk about? No, you can keep going. I'm here every week. Oh, boy, I don't... I'm waiting for challenges. I don't well, want, you know, I don't we're wanna, talking about... I don't want to spew all my info right up front. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for... You know, this happened last time I was on the, on the show. I came prepared, and then nobody wanted to call and, uh, and take up the... It's because you're right, and they know it. You think that's it? I, I think so. I'm so not, like I'm not challenging you. <laughs> Oh, look. <laughs> the phone lines are lighting up. <laughs> oh, we Send love one you of guys. Us through, uh, control room. We're, we're ready. It would be interesting if you're, if you're one, of the, one of the people who uh, happen to be a Christian and, and, or some other religion, and your religion and your, your personal views um, reject evolution. I'd really like to know why. Um, if the answer is just, I don't believe it, and, and I believe God in a literal genesis, I, I don't need to know that. I mean, you, you can't back that up at all, and it doesn't really matter. It, one of the points that I was going to make earlier, which kind of escaped me when we were talking about science it, and what science can and can't explain, if something is currently inexplicable, if we currently have no way of knowing the truth about it, then it's pretty much irrelevant until such time as it actually becomes possible to evaluate and understand and quantify. Um, that's when it becomes relevant. So the, those people who have a belief uh, based purely on faith and what the world and science and, and anybody else happens to say is completely irrelevant, I, there's no way to argue with that. I mean, you're free to believe whatever you want. And, and um, you know, we live in a, in a country where freedom of religion is paramount, along with freedom of speech. And so our, you know, I'm, I would like it if everybody uh, was able to figure out a way to abandon their religious beliefs. Um, but I, I, I'm not opposed to somebody having them for what, you know, whatever reason. But if you think you have a good reason not to accept evolution or, or some other scientific uh, principle, 
then uh, that would be worth knowing. I'd like to know what that would be. That would be interesting. You make a good point. I mean, we're we're up here talking about what our beliefs are, and um, we're we're disagreeing with uh, with folks out some folks out there, of course. But then those folks are already disagreeing with us, and this is all fair and right and proper. We all have the right to disagree with one another. The, uh, the problem comes in when anybody tries to force that on others when we're outside the realm of facts. Now, when it comes to scientific facts, that's what should be taught in a science right. classroom, for example. right? And just because you disagree with the established scientific facts doesn't give you the right to go, at least according to various court trials, does not give you the right to go into a public school classroom and say, or onto a school board and say, you must not teach that thing I don't agree with because right. just because I don't agree with it. There are people who don't believe that the sun is the center of our solar system and that the earth orbits the sun. There are real people who claim to believe that um, the earth is the center and all of this is a lie. Um, even people who reject evolution know that those people are kooks. Um, and they, sh they, had, they shouldn't be able to dictate what is taught in public schools. They are, you know, dissenting from established evidence and scientific facts. Um, and what, uh, what some of the people who reject evolution don't realize is that they are exactly the same. They just happen to be a little more vocal and uh, more popular, I guess, uh, especially lately. There, there's, there's people who still believe the Earth is flat. They have a website. So, you know, uh, yeah, I think that's an important point. If you really think that it's okay to impose your own religious views on the public schools, you've got to gotta take into account that you're opening the door for kooks who believe stuff even you think is ridiculous yeah. doing the same thing. And your kids going to school and being taught, you know, let's, uh, you know, today class, we're going to discuss the, uh, the problems with the round earth theory and the, po the alternate possibility that the earth is still really flat. Yeah, the Earth is flat, and there's just this space-time anomaly that is warping it so that it appears to be spherical. It's really okay. confusing stuff. Let's go on to Melissa. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. Um, happy Darwin Day. Happy Darwin Day. <laughs> um, I've never called in to anything before, but I anything? hope I don't sound too stupid. Um, I have a 17-year-old daughter who just recently told me that she doesn't believe in the Bible. She doesn't believe in God, any religion whatsoever. Yeah. And I respect that. I I'm not a perfect parent, but I certainly respect her right to believe what she wants. The problem is, every single one of her friends, um, I'm trying to think of a word, they're, they really give her a hard time about it. They, they won't respect her, her right to, to believe what she wants. And if you had any advice, because I know you guys get this all the time, you know, well, you're going to go to hell, and how can you not believe in the Bible? And if you have any advice on what maybe she should say other than, something vulgar. She, she hangs her head. She's like embarrassed now. Well, they treat her differently. A lot now. of it depends on what her reasons um, well, were. Well, she's, she's basing it on, she said it, it couldn't possibly happen from what she's, uh, you know, she's open-minded. She said, I don't believe that this happened and I don't believe this happened. And she points out all these things and I, re I listen and I respect, you know, what she, yeah. Yeah. What she believes in. You know, I, I it, think we should respect... If you want to believe in God, believe in God. If you don't, don't. Um, but the problem is, with teenagers, she's like being shunned by her friends because of it. And I wish I knew what to tell her to tell them, but I guess that's an ongoing problem for has she got every no, atheist around. Has she got no friends that uh, agree with her point of view? No. Every single one of them is Christian, and they believe... They're not Christian. Well, you know what I'm saying? They believe in God. So whatever you want to call that. Uh that they're whatever they say they are. It's yeah, right. it's exactly. Not, we, as atheists, we don't make it our business to put labels on other people. If they say they're Christians, they're Christians. Right, exactly. But I, I don't understand the double standard. That if you say you believe in God, well, then they, oh, you're a good person. If you say you don't, you're a bad person. Well, um... Isn't that, <coughs> isn't that what's been going on since the beginning of time? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, and that's... that's Part Basically, of what we're here trying to set straight, I mean, the, the, the whole concept that you can't be moral without God, that man is inherently evil, selfish, all, all of this stuff, I, I, I don't have good advice because when I, you know, I, I have no 
teenagers of my own. And when I was 17, I was a fundamentalist Christian, um, so I wouldn't have had to, to deal with this. And, and I, I can't really know her situation. What I, what I would suggest, though, um, is that you, know, you can get involved with groups like the ACA even if, if you're not dealing with people, you know, friends her age and everything else, um, there may be some benefit to letting her know that she's not alone. Right. I, I, I agree completely, but it really hit her at Christmas. They right. were like, well, then you can't have a present. I'm not going to get you anything. And they were just being, I guess, kids. Yeah. But I um, thought it was kind of cruel. Yeah, that, so. I think that's the only general advice we can give because we really don't want to tamper in somebody else's personal life. No, I understand, and, but I know, do appreciate I know, it. I know grown men who are atheists who are, um, who are still agonizing over whether they can come out to their own families. And, right. you know, I don't, I, I don't give the, the, those people advice on what they really should do because whether they should, you know, what they should do, it, it depends on their own situation. Right. The one, the one bit of advice we can give is we formed, we atheists here in Austin, formed the atheist community of Austin to provide a, you know, social uh, environment, support structure, place to meet people that think the same kinds of, kinds of things right. because without that, we were in the same boat. You know, it's just that it wasn't at school, it was at our jobs or, or wherever. Exactly. You know, wherever. Exactly. Though, though we do have, I, no, I don't want to imply that we don't have any younger people in the group. We do. Yeah, and if, if you, you know, if you're uncomfortable jumping in, you know, with both feet or doing that, there's also a bunch of online message boards and discussions, both within our organization and others as well. And as always, um, you know, you're welcome to join us for dinner after the program and, and, and discuss it, you know. All right. Well, uh, she's not here now, but I, I sure will talk to her about it tonight, and I appreciate your time. Oh, thanks a lot for calling. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll be going to uh, Thread Gills after the program on Riverside um, between First and Barton Springs, I think. Now, why can't uh, I... my we didn't ask her, but my impression is that that, that that mom is a Christian and is simply being accepting of her daughter's decision that she doesn't believe. Why can't more people be like that? That was freaking awesome. My parents, not too bad. I mean, my mom gives me a little guilt trip every once in a while, but mostly they've learned to live with it. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not too horrible. Um, and I'm one of the grown men who are struggling with. I didn't the want to point any fingers. No, no, no. It's well, I've talked about it on the show before. It's well known, and you know, the monkey is pointing at you. Well, uh, it's Matt. My parents will actually be down at the end of the month, and who knows what will happen? Maybe it'll. I, but be, but, but I don't, not but I don't advise you on what you should do. Right. You know your situation, and you need to, you know, pro you know. Usually, we the quest the time we get questions like that from that last caller is from some kid in high school who knows that they're an atheist and they know what kind of reaction they're going to get right. if they say anything about it and what should they do. And again, the, you know, the advice is look at your situation. If she's yeah. come out as an atheist and that, you know, she now has to deal with that and the, that this is the only advice we can offer is there's, there are other atheists out there that, uh, that can uh, provide emotional support. Yeah, and also, I don't know how much her interest is. I mean, everybody, anybody who, who accepts atheism does so for a variety of different reasons, but um, if she's, if she's um, willing to, to dig into it a little bit and do some research, um, she can challenge those friends, get them to question their own beliefs. Um, and a lot of it just comes down to, you know, okay, asking questions like why or provide some evidence, you know. When, when people make claims of, oh, well, don't you know Jesus loves you? Well, how do you know that? Well, how, do, how can you even demonstrate that this person even existed? There is a legitimate question about that. Uh, any number of things that come up in a, in a religious discussion um, by just, you know, not letting them get under her skin, she can challenge them to actually try and find some evidence uh, to support their claims and, and may end up steering them away from their religious beliefs as well. Um, if, if, she, if she can support why she has rejected uh, the religious idea, then I think, uh, I think she'll end up coming out the other side stronger for it. Having it, it, it yeah, I mean, we, encounter, um, we encounter people all the time who say, well, I used to be an atheist. Yeah. And... Uh, and then they'll argue with us about various things. And it, it's clear to us that these used-to-be atheists, Weren't very never, good atheists. <laughs> they never had a very clear grasp of why they were atheists when they were, if in fact they ever were. But, and it's encouraging to hear that, that this young woman 
um, seems to have act, have decided that she didn't believe because she thought about it. That's that's a good thing. Let's uh, let's move on to Chris. How you doing? How you doing, guys? Hi, Chris. Good. Happy Darwin Day. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to uh, just mention something that I. Um, uh, saw on television. This goes under the categorization of Christians not necessarily being more uh, moral than anybody else. Uh, this fellow who was throwing puppies off of a moving truck and uh, anyway was confronted by live news cameras and everything else. But this happened, I think it was in Alabama or something or other, but he's a pastor. So anyway, I'm sure somebody else out there has heard of this story or saw it. Why was he throwing puppies off the back of a truck? Well, one can assume that he, you know, they were, they were uh, you know, extra litter or something, and he didn't want to deal with them or whatever. Was but he, like, driving he went, down the highway throwing them out the back of a truck? Yeah, he was, he was throwing them off out of a moving truck, and, and these uh, little dogs were, had, uh, you know, uh, injuries, road rash, or whatever else, and he was caught by somebody who was following him. And um, the only thing he said was, don't call the police, don't call the police, you know. And so this is a big, huge thing. Anyway, well, I'd imagine he was saying that. Yeah, well, the, uh, the uh, news cameras went to his place, and they, they weren't sure if it was him or somebody in his congregation or whatever else. But this other fellow, a black guy, was really confrontational. He looked like he was going to hit the uh, reporter or whatever. And anyway, I'm, I'm sure somebody else out there watching saw this thing, hmm. and I just wanted to uh, to let you guys know and yeah. mention all, it. All human beings are capable of doing horrible things. That's yeah. one thing about Christianity that's actually true. All human beings are capable of doing terrible things. The question is, you know, what is the healthiest, most sensible way to turn yourself into a person that is as unlikely to actually do a horrible thing as possible. And we think that the, the sensible way of doing that is to actually understand why you shouldn't be horrible. It's not because there's a big invisible man in the sky who's going to hurt you, right? Uh, so, and, it, <laughs> and, you know, when you believe, if your only reason for not being bad is you believe this, there's this big invisible man in the sky who's going to hurt you, but you think that your membership in his, in his fan club is going to prevent him from hurting you no matter what you do, then you've just short-circuited your entire basis for, for being good in the first place. I'm sure this priest or uh, pastor or whoever it was, if they in fact are a believer, is tossing the puppies out going, this is horrible, I'm sure God hates this, but as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to apologize. Yeah, it was just a horrible thing to watch, you know, and it just solidified my viewpoint that anybody... anybody Are they actually broadcasting thing. footage of him chucking these puppies? Is this no, no, news no. now? When did you hear this? Oh, this was like uh, uh, probably a week ago, maybe five or six days ago. I woke. I have my TV on automatic wake up, and I, I woke up CNN, and they were showing the reporters uh, getting confronted by somebody in his congregation. They weren't sure if it was him or if it was somebody in his congregation, but he was really belligerent, and he was... Uh, acting like uh, he was gonna he was gonna hit somebody, you know, and then yeah. and then sped off in reverse and almost hit another car, and that they did broadcast. So, yeah, well, um. huh? <sighs> That's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for calling, Chris. All uh, right, take we'll, care, guys. We'll talk to you later. You know, normally I, I I try to avoid you know getting second or third generation hearsay yes. um, as whatever, and it, it's just and it, it may be worthwhile to talk about it. it it's how do you determine when there's sufficient evidence to believe any claim? Now, with regard to Chris, I, Chris has called before. I, I've recognized his voice. I don't have any reason to assume he'd be lying. So, yeah, but it could turn out that this isn't true. But the reason why it seems reasonable to accept is because we hear about things like this all the time, um, both from religious people and from irreligious people. Um, so, you know, it's... That, that's really uh, but sad. But let's be fair. There may have been a darn good reason to chuck those puppies out Maybe the Maybe they were possessed. Yes, that's exactly what they I was thinking. They were talking to him, telling him to kill people. And yeah. rather than, you know, follow Berkowitz down and become son of Sam, he, he decided to kill the puppies. No, no. I don't actually think that's possible. Probably but, uh, not. Uh, but nuts. He could have been crazy. It's possible that he was crazy. Well, I think he had to be a little you know, bit crazy. Actually sick. You know, I, I'd say that anybody who can just toss puppies out the back of a moving truck on a highway, there's probably a little crazy going on there. Okay, fair enough. We got Bob. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? Hi, you, Bob. Uh, happy Darwin Day. Happy Darwin Day. Um, 
I watched it on a little bit ago. You uh, hung up on me. Yes, you were asking and me then a you question. swore at us after we hung up on you. I think that uh, he needs he needs to go away again. Doesn't no, he? I'm all right. I just I wanted well, to. Uh, he's got his finger on the thing. He can push it pretty quick. I bet. But yeah, anyway, yeah. okay. Um, you were asking me a question, and then you hung up, and I was going to try to answer that question. But oh, were you, you? You asked me if we were behind the church burnings, and I said no, and I asked if you were. Are you? I actually am. You are. Yeah. Yeah, he's a nut. Goodbye. Well, at least uh, at least the police will be able to trace the call and find out for sure if he was. No. Oh, here we've got somebody with more information about the uh, puppy chucker. Oh, but hello. hello. Is this Douglas? Douglas? Yes, yes, it is. How you well, doing? Uh, I researched this online, and the reason he was uh, he was chunking these puppies off the, uh, his his car is because he had a problem with his anus. Yeah. So do we right now. <laughs> and I just hung up on him. All right. So, um... Hey, you stupid... <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and read some more of my info here. Go for it. I was expecting, you know, you bring up a, a, a evolution on this show. Whenever it just comes up in the course of normal conversation, we get all these calls from... Right. from uh, fundamentalists who think that they need to make it their business to, uh to uh, shoot down evolution. But you come in prepared, and they won't call. Eh. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and respond to the unasked uh, challenge uh, about micro versus macro evolution. You've heard this thing? I've heard of this imaginary thing. A lot of, a lot of, uh, of creationists who, who fancy themselves um, intelligent design advocates, yes. which, by the way, is the same freaking thing, uh, they will say, yes, we know that there is microevolution, which is to say you can, like, breed chihuahuas to have curlier fur over time, right? Or in nature you might have, you know, mo minor modifications in populations. That much really does happen, but what doesn't happen is macroevolution. And what they usually mean, if they understand at all what they're talking about, what they mean is... Uh, that what they mean by macroevolution is that you, that species don't turn into completely different species, right? That there's just variation within uh, each kind. Uh, there is, in fact, no difference between micro and macro evolution, except this: the genes uh, between species usually diverge while genes within a species usually combine. What that means is, say you've got two, you've got a, a big population of antelope, and half of the antelope go into this uh, secluded valley, and the other half go across this river, and they get separated, and they never breed across with one another again for millions and uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of years. When that happens, Microevolution, the thing that, that, that these fundamentalists and uh, intelligent designers uh, agree happens. Microevolution is enough over time to, ca to ch cause enough changes in those two populations that in the future, if they do meet again, they can no longer interbreed. As soon as that's happened, you've got two separate species right. by that definition of species. And uh, and, and so to say that one happens and the other doesn't is, is ridiculous because what we don't have is a mechanism to prevent microevolution from adding up over time to the point where you'd have, uh, where, it would, where it would stop the ability of one population to interbreed with another. Unless the god is actually stepping in and saying, no, 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 no. Even though microevolution, which I allow to occur, even though that happens, I'm going to stick my magical finger in and prevent it from accumulating to the point where we get different species. There is no such mechanism in nature. It's an imaginary line drawn by the intelligent design folks um, because there's so much evidence and so it's so clearly obvious that if they were trying to refute what they determine is 
or call microevolution, they would be laughed out of everywhere. So by drawing this imaginary line, they can, you know, give in a little bit, but say, no, no, in the broader scale, this isn't true. Um, and they, they do the same thing with the fossil record, saying, you know, um, here's a fossil, and here's a fossil, you have no intermediate fossil. And then when they find one, well, now you've got two more gaps to fill. And when you fill them, you've got four gaps to fill. You know, so you, you, you can't ever yes, there, satisfy the There is that game, but that's, that's, just a, that's just a ploy. Yeah. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, I mean, that's like saying, because I didn't actually see my car drive through the car wash, you know, I, I send it in with somebody else driving, and I see it enter one side and come out the other side because I didn't see it in the middle. Therefore, I, it's reasonable to conclude that my car didn't travel between those things. Um, do you want to mention that? Yeah, we, we can go to go back a minute ago. We had, we had another caller uh, the, whose daughter um, didn't have friends uh, who, who shared her atheistic views. And one of the people here in the studio had mentioned that the important thing to consider is would she prefer or would her friends prefer that she lie to them about her beliefs? You know. you know, and in fact, I think in many cases the answer, sadly, is yes. I, because uh, we're I would forever hope not, getting. I think maybe. Uh, here's another kind of call we haven't gotten today: is from the angry Christian dem demanding to know how dare we have a TV show? Yeah. You know, as if it's okay for us to be atheists as long as we don't mention it to anybody else. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, we have as much right as anybody else. Everybody has as much right as anybody else to speak their mind. Um. Uh, getting back to the evolution thing, uh, this is not just some academic. Well, you know, we don't la we, we lack a, a knowledge of any mechanism that would prevent microevolution from accumulating into what uh, ideas call macroevolution. It's not just that we lack any knowledge of that mechanism. We actually have observed instances of speciation and. Uh, there it is. There's a nice link if you want to go to a website. Talk Origins is a website where they've gathered uh, reams and reams and reams of material from all over the scientific community to, uh, that is used on the Talk Origins um, uh, news group. This has all come up in challenges to evolution that have arisen on that news group, and they've, they've collected all this information. If you want to see actual instances of observed speciation where two populations during the, you know, the course of human experience have diverged to where they used to be able to interbreed and now they can't, that's the place to go. Let's go on to uh, Lenny calling again. Oh uh, yeah, I was going to talk about something else, but hey, I sidetracked me with the evolution again. Uh, it, it, it's funny, man, right, because like, like what you're talking about with the micro and the macro deal, like, um, it's like, uh, show us evidence of this. So you'll say, well, if you look at the fossil record, you know, say, well, that might be a transition of uh, fossil, but that could be just something else. Like, you take the, the dinosaurs and birds, you know what I'm saying? The same, the same imaginary line they draw between micro and macro evolution they do with the fossil record for human history and say, boom, everything on this side of the line is ape, everything on this side of the line is human, and there's no connection. Right. Yeah, and, there you go. And, and, yeah, and then they'll say, the, the, the popular catchphrase is, well, we've never seen a dog turning into a pine cone, right? Or crazy things like that. Well, you know, you've, uh, getting back to my car wash uh, uh, example, we've never seen a car just get clean all on its own, right? We've never seen a car just sit there and suddenly suds up and get and get rinsed off and be clean. Therefore, in between the time where my car enters the car wash and the time when my car emerges from the car wash, those must be two different cars because cars don't clean themselves. Just taking advantage of the fact that, well, because there's this period of time when we don't see what's happening to the car, we can then pretend that it's impossible for those two events to have a connection. Yeah, man, it's like. You got evidence, and they'll say that's not that, that's this and that's that. But then you say, okay, well, um, where's your important? Uh, take take idea. And they'll say, well, this, everything is so complex that it has to have to has to have been designed by something. Then you say like, like with the, um, they use like the bacteria for jello or whatever. But then you have like in 
and like you carry us, you have the eel. It doesn't have any of the spoke proteins, any of the center core proteins, and yet it still works. And then like, they say you there's no evidence, but you look at like homology, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you but they, you know, the, the, all, all those arguments are take advantage of the same kind of thing, right? All kinds of stuff goes on that hasn't been observed, and they're trying to pretend that because it hasn't been observed or hasn't been identified yet, therefore it can't have happened. Um, yeah, but, but then it's like, but you, who, who has seen Jesus that's living today? Not a, you know, not a single Christian on the planet. Well, you know, they, they might say they have one day, you know, riding a cloud or something. But I mean, really, you know, nobody's ever seen him. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know um, what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. And those and those two arguments may sound similar, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, skeptics saying, "Well, you know, we don't see evidence that there was Jesus, therefore we doubt there was a Jesus." And and I, intelligent design people saying, "We don't see how the bacterial flagellum formed, therefore we don't think that it formed. We think it was magic." Right? The difference <laughs> yeah. is that. We all know that there's stuff that goes on that isn't magic. There's all kinds of physical processes that go on all the time. There's absolutely not a shred of doubt that non-magical processes happen. The people that want to claim that something magical occurred need to actually prove there's any such thing as magic before it can even be taken into consideration. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Take a human arm, take a bat wing, a whale flipper, a mole, you know, or whatever you want to call it. You can find that all kinds, of, you can find it's like structures that are basically the same, but just, you know, modified differently through selection. Yeah, you know and it's, it's a good, good question, you know, to ask believers why would a God do that? I mean, if you've exactly. got infinite power and infinite knowledge and infinite time, right? Why you why would, would yeah why would you, you know? why would you reuse the design of a of a of a hand or a paw right when you're laying out the bones in the fin of a whale why would you bother every single animal could be a just miraculously completely different totally unrelated thing this brings up another point i wanted to raise uh, on the subject of darwin you know darwin did not in, invent the idea that something like evolution had to occur. Darwin's thing is natural selection. The, yeah, the right. term evolution was in use already in his day by other scientists. There was a guy before him, Lamarck, who formulated an explanation for, for this observed phenomenon of evolution. We, uh, but he was wrong. He thought, he tried to explain like giraffes, uh, giraffe's long necks by saying, yeah, like the, yeah the because the mom and dad head. stretched their necks up a lot to try to get at the leaves, that trait was carried on to the children. But he was wrong because that's not how, uh, how ca traits get passed on. It's not if your dad works out a lot, you get born with extra muscles. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, so so he was change. wrong, but he was Darwin. before Darwin, and he was trying to explain the same thing. And yeah. oh, and in this you know this whole thing about um, you know the the similar arrangement of bones in the hands of wild in the, the forepaws of wildly disparate kinds of animals that is exactly what had already been d observed before Darwin that led scientists to conclude something had to be going on to explain that how come there's these similarities in, between different kinds of animals and what Darwin provided that was the huge breakthrough and the reason that, that he's got a day named after him now is the mechanism of natural selection. Yeah, okay, yeah. That was what I originally talked back about. Um, hey, y'all guys, I kind of, you know, y'all kind of look at evidence to kind of look at, well, this ex best explains this. This is kind of, I'm sure this is not really like in y'all's area or whatever. But like, I'm sure that it seems like y'all attribute like the um, 9-11 attacks are like um, radical Islam, right? But I mean, there's like, really, there's literally tons of evidence that shows that like criminals and, you know, at least the U.S. government was responsible. I was one of the guys that looked up into that more, I just kind of heard it and not really looked into that, or, you know. I, I think that's not true. 
I have looked into it. Yeah, but I think I, it's not true. I, I haven't seen good enough evidence to support that, but it's it's. You, you know, know what? An interesting Here, here's he, um, uh, yeah. Um, the other day, I, I actually spent some time looking at a couple of different sites talking about that. And the thing that bothered me that makes it impossible for me to believe that the that those who uh, claim that 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 there was that kind of conspiracy going on, the, the thing that makes it make, makes it impossible for me to believe that they are right is you go to two different websites, and they'll have exactly the same pictures, and not see the same thing that, that they each call evidence, right? One guy will say, oh, there's this flash of light over here that's suspicious. And another guy will say, well, there's this, um, there's this other thing going on in the exact same photo, and that's suspicious. If they can't, if they can't, if they don't see the same evidence in the same place, then I think what you're, what's going on is individual interpretation of fuzzy photographs. Well, I'm not talking about that because you got like a lot of people with their, you got some kind of wild stuff with like pods and crap like that. I'm talking about like things like um, the, um, basically the rest of his family was flown out when nobody else could fly. You got people that were warned not to go to New York and, you know, I, but that, that's an entirely different issue from, you know, was our government, our wildly incompetent government, involved in this gigantic conspiracy that, the, that the, those who believe in the conspiracy can't even agree on what constitutes evidence of the conspiracy, right? I mean, it is true that our president's family has had business relationships in the past with the bin Ladens. And that, that's a fact. Although I think we've gotten way outside the scope yeah. of atheism and the Darwin Day evolution stuff. Thank you for cutting that off. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we, you can always carry on a discussion with us outside of the show by emailing the, the addresses on the screen, tv at atheist-community.org. Um, and well, thank you for calling again, Lenny. Um, for Lenny and anybody else who's atheist, atheist friendly, um, we are going to be going to dinner after the program. Uh, we'll be on for the next 10 minutes or so, at, uh, but we'll be going to Threadgills on Riverside. We normally get there between 6.30 and 6.45, and, and you're welcome to join us. Um, I think I'm going to start a new uh, thing. What new thing? A new Wash My Car by Prayer campaign. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your story about a car volunteer, you know, sudsing itself up and becoming clean is good. We've never observed me. that. Therefore, so, what happens inside that car wash, it can't be that. But for all of <laughs> all of the Christians who believe the verses that say, "Wherever two or you, two or more of you are gathered in my name, whatever you ask, you'll get," um, that you know, and you believe in the efficacy of prayer, and you're really concerned about my eternal soul, soul, my dirty car sits outside all the time, and as soon as I come out and find it spontaneously cleaned, and and you know, you let me know ahead of time that you've been praying and that God's going to do it on this night, because. If you just come out and wash it yourself while I'm sleeping, we That's can't cheating. count that. Yeah, <laughs> but let's let's wash my car by prayer, and, and because that's the only way it's going to happen. It's uh, I don't have enough time to get it done. It's, Hello. Uh, we've got Walt. How you doing? Doing good there. Hi, Walt. Uh, for a second. Happy Darwin Day. Thank you too. I thought the program was going to change to politics for a moment. Sorry, I've never heard you guys talk about that before. Sorry. Um, I wanted to ask you if you'd ever heard of an experiment. I guess you know the old story of, you know, a child being raised by wolves. Uh -huh. Just being like a myth or anything. But they're actually, they actually did that one time to test evolution to see if, you know, a child would develop more wolf traits. Who did but, this? Well, it didn't work because the wolf ate him. And they ate the little child. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thanks, Walt. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was wondering as, you know... Which lunatic government authorized that kind of experiment? Because uh, that just seems way out there. Yes. Let's go on to Tom. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, Happy Tom. Darwin Day. And Thank same you, to you. Yeah. Um, I usually don't call unless somebody's going to challenge you, because I love when people challenge you. And since they're too chicken to challenge you today, Jeff, uh, I think I'll talk about... Uh, uh, Darwin Day and infinity. I think infinity should be the sign of, of atheists because it uh, it explains everything. It, it, it's it's so hard to wrap your mind around uh, infinity. You know, infin infinite time, infinite space, infinite 
uh, size, and if you can't, it's like for everything to come together, for our, our species to, to, to evolve from molecules just coming into space, you have to just think of infinite time it took to do it. And, and I, yeah, it's actually the time we have a pretty good handle on, and it's not infinite. It's just really, really, really huge. I think uh, even more uh, revealing, if you think about it, is the sheer number of chemical reactions that are going on all throughout the entire universe all at once. The entire universe, which is infinite, which is it's just hard to even imagine if you try to imagine that. And also, infinite size. You, you, things are, are, there's no, no such thing as the smallest. Even within our own fingernails, there could be whole universes. Oh, I don't think that's necessarily borne out by the evidence. Well, the scientists have gotten down to some pretty basic particles now, and it doesn't look like, it, like there was a breaking down into They, 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 they got down to, to the basic particles that they can <laughs> We have a physicist in the room who's sort of going. That they can detect, but how do you know that they're in something even smaller? But even if it is, it's not, it's not galaxies. It's not mini solar systems. I remember when I was a kid reading the Hulk uh, comic book, and the Hulk got shrunk down to subatomic size, and... In the subatomic world, molecules were, or, 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 I'm sorry, individual atoms were whole solar systems, and he landed on uh, like an electron, and it was a planet, and there was a whole civilization living there. Okay. But that's comic books. That's not really it, it, it may, yeah, But the, there's nothing to say that that's not true. I mean, we can't detect it, but there's, You've studied fractals probably, right? I, what I, I think what the I will point say is that there's n no good reason <laughs> to actually believe it's true. The yeah, inter I mean, interesting possibilities like that are interesting, and you know, especially in like science fiction. Well, it goes the other way. It's fine, fine too. but to take, um, to, to, before you take something like that seriously, there really ought to be some actual evidence that that is the case. Well, Until then, you really don't have to worry about it. It's the same space. as God. Do you think there's an end of space? To, or do you believe there's a... A shell, and then uh, last I heard, um, the the shape of the universe. I, I heard somebody, some scientist, came out with a theory that the universe is shaped like a saddle. It's like a warped disk kind of thing. It's not actually infinitely huge, so as I understand. It. You might want to. I highly be recommend to reading some some pop science books. Right, right. Because they can do a pretty good job of, of getting you a, giving you a general idea, even though you won't understand the details, giving you a general idea of where science is at right now. Um, okay. I'm but actually there, there not is. a fan me, of let infinity. Me move on to, I find, to I find things junkin. like, huh? Let me move on to puppy chunking. Oh, but, boy. Before you get there, there is one idea about your, your infinity thing that I like, and it's going to, I'm going to amend my wash my car with prayer. Oh, boy. And change it to... Turn my car into an infinity by prayer. Let's Actually, get rid of that well, cheap well, piece well, of crap I'm driving and just oh, replace and it infinity? with an infinity um, <laughs> that's know, nice and clean. We just wake up one morning and all the kids with cancer at the child at the children's hospital are cured. Oh, all right. You know, if you want to go the altruistic route, I was Why just not? looking for a new car. Uh, yeah, you know. but you know, ever since that uh, that uh, prayer of Jabez thing, it's like suddenly that. Well, the last thing that used to be sort of, um, I thought, honorable about Christianity is you're not supposed to pray for personal benefit. And ever since that prayer of Jabez thing came out, where the, supposedly some obscure verse in the Bible says it's okay to pray for money, I, I find it hard to, to have respect for any of it anymore. And as, as far as books on the subject go, um, you can check out Road to Reality by Roger Penrose. Um, and it's, oh, is that the book? <laughs> it's a hefty tome that covers from basic math up to quantum physics and. Can yes. I talk about puppy junking? Puppy sure. junking. Yeah, why not? You got uh, about a minute. Okay. Well, it's just like a pedophile priest and puppy junking. If believing in uh, God would help you make a better decisions in life and would give you the strength not to do the wrong things versus atheists who have no beliefs and, and, and therefore no morals, then how come so many, then how can somebody who, who devotes their whole life to God, such as a priest, 
can can molest young children, whereas an atheist who has no desire to to molest children or chunk puppies. I have a theory. You want to know what it is? Certainly. My theory is that the 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 really dangerous part about religion based morality is not just that it blinds the believers to actual things in life that they ought to be taking into consideration, like, is behaving this way actually for everybody's benefit? It's not just that. I think the more dangerous part is the idea that the God wrote the rules and can change them anytime he wants. Because then the religion is not only the source of morality, it's also the source of the excuse for how, you, how come you don't have to be moral. We're about out of time. Reminder, at dinner, we're going to Thread Gills down on Riverside and tune in next week. We'll, uh, we'll be having different co-hosts on than, uh, than you're used to, and it, it's looking to be a good show. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks, Jeff, for coming down. Happy thanks, Darwin Day, everybody. Happy Darwin Day, everybody.